Hello everybody, what's up, what's going on, and welcome to the 21st episode of Raptors in One. So guys, today I'm going to be talking about the game that happened between the Raptors and the Golden State Warriors. Uh, this was on Sunday, and uh, yeah, without any further ado, let's get it. So just as I had predicted, um, I had predicted a loss for Toronto. Um, again, I, I am a Raptors fan, and I know that a lot of people will be like, well, you should always bet on the home team. Well, I also know about basketball and matches, matchups, and when I see an unfavorable matchup, I'm going to call it as I see it, or at least as I think I see it. Uh, having said that, it's never a guarantee, as Charles Barkley famously says, um, but in this case, it was a guarantee, and the Raptors did lose to the Golden State Warriors. Having said that, I got to say, um, playing against the best team in the NBA right now, uh, having the best record, uh, they played as well as they could have. Uh, they definitely fought, especially on the defensive end. However, there were some defensive schemes that were a little shady. Uh, you know, I was kind of thinking, why are we playing 2-3 zone to protect uh, the paint when really we were being exposed on the wings? Um, maybe even if they, if they still wanted to play zone and if they even switched it to a 3-2 zone, I could understand. Um, I wouldn't. I wouldn't hold them. I wouldn't hold it against them, especially. And I know, like most of their defensive um, attention went towards Steph Curry. Uh, having said that, you know they did a good job on Steph Curry. Again, he wasn't a hundred percent from what I hear. Uh, they held him to under twenty points, which is a win, <laughs> right? But because of that, he also had eight assists. You might as well put all your uh, focus all your defensive attention on Steph Curry. Meanwhile, players like, um, you know, Jordan Poole or Andrew Wiggins uh, and even o Otto Porter. Uh, he was, he f seems like he found his game. And uh, yeah, like players like them started to flourish and kill us, really. Uh, but I have to say, you know, with Golden State's makeup, uh, the, the players that they have on their roster and, uh, of course, the plays that they draw, it is not favorable matchup for the Raptors because as good of a defensive team as we are, they really did stretch us out. And, of course, they're a hot shooting team. Once they get hot, it's hard to stop them. Uh, and so they really stretched out our defense and, of course, Every time they stretched it out, we were vulnerable in the paint. If we concentrated on the paint, we were vulnerable on the wings. And surely enough, uh, that was pretty much the narrative of the game. Now, of course, it's uh, important to note that Golden State, they had an early jump on us. They had an early lead on us, and they never looked back. Uh, and again, this goes back to my whole philosophy of uh, playing the full 48. All right. As soon as that ball is thrown up in the air and the tip off, that's it. You start playing right away. No, there's no plays off. You know, Draymond is very, very famous for that. I, I had seen a clip of his. Uh, I think they were playing against. Um, I'm not sure. Maybe uh, I don't know which which team they were playing. Uh, again, I, I can't remember. It's really early in the morning. And we have uh, our first accumulation of the year. Woo! Uh, yeah, I'm being sarcastic there, guys. Um, I don't mind a little bit of snow, as long as it's a little bit. As long as it's not like 15 to 20 centimeters. Because, uh, uh, you know, your boy has to go and shovel the snow outside, right? Um, but yeah, at least the weather is not super cold. So, there's some positive to take from there. Speaking of positives... There were some positives to take from this game, despite the loss, all right? The fact that we have the fight in us, that we didn't quit, even when it was a guarantee loss, we still we still fought on the defensive end. A couple of players that showed up are centers. 
Yeah. Uh, again, compared to the Golden State, our centers, our centers are actually pretty good. You know, we actually do have size compared to the Golden State in the paint. Um, you know, Precious, Precious Achua, he showed up. So uh, he had a decent game. Um, I'm not again like I don't have access to my stats, but I think uh, he either almost had a double double or he had a double double. Um, he had a he had a good shooting night too, and then of course Chris Boucher, yeah boy, time to be consistent now with your performances. You've been uh, you've been killing it for the past two three games now, right? So uh, yeah, he um, he he had a double double, and uh, he also had a good shooting night, good defensive night. Uh, so that's what we need. Also, uh, Siakam, Siakam also had a decent game. Um, you know he scored north of 20 points and um, you know he did he, he had a decent game I would say and again these uh, it's like I mentioned in the previous uh, episode if he can score north of 20 points and he's consistent with that uh, that is what we need from him so final thoughts guys um, yeah I, I I kind of expected the loss uh, having said that you know it would have been nice surprise to see them beat the Golden State Warriors Maybe take advantage of the paint, uh, of their size in the paint more. Um, and on the defensive end, again, uh, you know, maybe concentrate more on the uh, on more one-on-one, -on -one, uh, you know, um, or even like a 3-2 zone if you really wanted to play zone. You know, protect that three-point line and we would have taken our chances in the paint. Um, but hey, you know, again, this is me just looking at it from the stands as opposed to uh, the coaching staff looking at it from the bench uh, on the court. So, yeah, it's a tough loss, but hey, uh, we're going to get them back. We're going to get them back, uh, especially when they come home. And um, again, you know, I wouldn't be surprised if uh, the Golden State Warriors were still sour about the 2019 championship run. Um, you know, they, they, they lost a tough one to us uh, in Game 6, of course. They had Kevin Durant, then they lost Kevin Durant. They had Clay Thompson, they had lost Clay Thompson. Now, of course, uh, speaking of losing players, I forgot to mention that the Raptors did not have OG and Inobi, so that was a lot of uh, offensive and defensive power that we lost. And of course, Gary Trent Jr. he uh, he struggled in this game. So again, recipes of a loss, right? But for the Golden State Warriors, obviously they didn't have Clay Thompson. However, uh, I feel like in the upcoming weeks, uh, he's gonna be—he's already cleared for full, full uh, physical practice. You know, uh, barring any injuries during practice, uh, it will be nice to see him to uh, play on the court. You know, uh, as much as he's the enemy, uh, as much as he's on the enemy team, uh, I, I still am a fan of Clay Thompson. I like his game, uh, his defense. So it'll be nice to see him perform. Um, I'm sure he's probably itching to get on the court too. And if he does come back, man, that's going to bolster an already good Golden State team. It will be interesting to see this. Now with Scotty Barnes, um, it seems like he may, it, a lot of people are thinking, you know what, he's probably hit his rookie wall. And that might partially be the reason why he hasn't been performing as well as he was earlier on in the season. If you were to ask me, I think it's better that he hits the rookie wall now as opposed to even midway point or towards the end of the season. Having said that, I honestly feel he, that he hasn't hit the rookie wall. Not just yet. Or maybe he has. But in my opinion, I think it's more uh, because of the incorporation of Pascal Siakam into the starting line. And, and basically into the lineup period, whether it's the starting or coming off the bench. Of course, uh, Pascal is in the starting lineup now, and because of that, he has to now figure out his game. You know, with Pascal, uh, he likes to attack the paint. He's much more successful attacking the paint. And, uh, of course, Scotty Barnes is also more successful attacking the paint. And now, of course, even with OG attacking the paint, it's like the paint has now become a little more crowded. And so Scotty Barnes is gonna have is gonna have to basically figure out how to play with these players, how to still impact the game, especially on the offensive end, uh, because on the defensive end I think he's still good. 
Uh, it's just on the offensive end, he's going to have to figure out how to play with these players who also love to operate in the same position uh, as he does. And I think the next step is basically he's going to have to start stretching out the defense, whether it's taking 17, 18-foot jump shots or even leaking out to the three-point line, which means, again, he's going to have to reinvent his game. He's going to have to start working on that three-point shot. Um, I honestly, though, like him operating in the paint, especially because I feel that he is more successful operating in the paint compared to Pascal and OG, in my opinion. Uh, from what I've seen, uh, I would rather him attack the paint and the other two maybe stick to, like, um, again, you know, within the flow of the game, uh, stick to jump shots or uh, three-point shots. You know, maybe make it easier for him to operate in the paint. Having said that, um, there has to be some offensive plays, some uh, offensive schemes that Nurse can run, which can allow all three of them to, to uh, thrive in the paint. So, again, final, final thoughts. <laughs> um, it was a hard pill to swallow. It's a loss, but it was an expected pill. I figured this was going to happen, and it did, and it's all good. So right now, uh, we got the, our next two games. Uh, the next two games against Memphis and Indiana, to be honest, I can't see why the Raptors want, uh, can't win this. Uh, if they don't, maybe it's because, you know, it's a long road trip. They've been on the road for too long and, you know, tired, weary legs, tired minds. It's a good thing that we get these kind of road trips out of the way early on in the season. Um, having said that, if they win these two games, it's like I had mentioned in my previous video, if they can get a 50% win uh, on this road trip, 50% of the games, which is basically they got to win the next two games, then, in my opinion, it's a successful road trip. Especially early on in the season with conditioning being a factor and them trying to figure out how to play with each other with almost half the roster being new. That would be a good, um, that would be a good, interesting win. And so, uh, or a good, interesting road trip. So that's it for me, guys. Until next time, I'm out.